from South Padre Island to Rio Grande City. This is Local 23 News Today. Good morning, Valley. I'm Brenda Matuti. Thanks for kicking off your morning on Local 23 today. I'm Sydney Gray. We begin this morning with Freddie Vela, who has been tracking weather for us all morning long. Had some rain. Freddie, what can we expect today? Yeah, you know, the possibility of rain still there. We could still see some more rain, and we saw that earlier this morning. Uh, a little spotty shower had picked up uh, just north of Edinburgh through McCook, uh, and now we're seeing a few more showers starting to pick up uh, in around Combs, uh, just south of Raymondville. I'll zoom into that one little area that we're seeing some of that rain right there uh, let me go ahead and pause it so that way we can see where it's at right now I'll zoom right back in here we go uh, Sebastian life for just north of Combe that's where we're seeing some of that rain moving through Losada now these are spotty showers that we're continuing to see build up but check out what's happening all across the Gulf Coast and of course that's the concern some of that rain Kate could start making its way on in and as we started to move through the morning hours more rain chances starting to pick up especially for those out towards Brownsville. Coming up in the next 10 minutes, I'll have an update of where else we could see some rain and how long it'll last. All right, thank you for that update, Freddie. Happening today, an engineering firm will begin inspecting the sister buildings to the Champlain Towers in Surfside, Florida. Structural engineers will do a forensic study using x rays and radar to see if the sister buildings are safe. The mayor says inspectors did a preliminary inspection and found no immediate concerns, but a deeper dive is needed. Evacuations at the sister building are not mandatory, but are recommended. It's day six and rescuers in Surfside are still searching for survivors following the condo's partial collapse. There are 11 confirmed deaths so far. 150 people remain unaccounted for. Crews continue to work 12-hour shifts as they battle Mother Nature shifting through the rubble. The rubble shifts, we stop because you can't take a chance of the rubble shifting and harming somebody's life below. Now a makeshift memorial is growing near the site of the collapse. Dozens of photos of the missing are attached to a chain link fence near the property. Newsweek reports a man named Steve Rosenthal is the first person to file an individual lawsuit against the condo association. Rosenthal's lawyer says his client was standing near the tower when it fell. Not only did Rosenthal lose his home, he also inhaled some of the demolition dust. According to that lawsuit, the condo association was negligent in its duties and is responsible for the collapse. Rosenthal is seeking an undisclosed amount of money and a jury trial. Last week, a $5 million class action lawsuit was filed against the property owners. Immigration news this morning. A new video from Governor Greg Abbott's Twitter page shows the beginning of construction for what he calls the state's new border wall. The governor adding the Texas Facilities Commission is now working to hire a program manager to oversee some of that construction. The governor's office says this is state-owned land being cleared near Eagle Pass. Star County Judge Eloy Vera says no one from the governor's office has discussed what the project actually includes. My job is to protect uh, the citizens of this county to the best that I can and to make sure that whatever happens in this county is in their best interest. So I'm not going to commit to anything until I have all the information that I need. Vera says he would not be opposed to sections of the wall being built in parts of Star County. However, he says he won't agree to it until the governor explains the plan. Democratic lawmakers in our state are urging Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen to prevent Governor Abbott from using American Rescue Plan funds for the border wall. The plea comes ahead of Governor Abbott's visit to Edinburgh tomorrow. He's participating in a town hall with former President Donald Trump and touring the border. Lawmakers sent Secretary Yellen a letter saying the governor has not raised enough money to build the wall. So far, the governor has raised $459,000 in private donations. Star, Hidalgo, Cameron, and Willacy counties are no longer a part of Governor Abbott's border disaster declaration. Take a look at the map on your screen. The admitted declaration only includes the 28 counties that have declared a disaster and agreed to partner with the state on its border security efforts. After issuing the original disaster declaration, Governor Abbott met with, local, with, with law enforcement and county judges asking for their collaboration and partnership. For details on that amended declaration, visit valleycentral.com. Attention property owners, you have until tomorrow to pay your 2021 tax balance or you'll have to pay extra fees. Hidalgo County officials say if that balance is not paid by tomorrow, your interest will increase to 18% next month 
and you'll have to pay an extra 15% collection fee. The tax office is encouraging folks to make partial payments or pay the balance in full to avoid additional late fees. And a heads up for homeowners built behind on their mortgage payments. You may be at risk of losing your COVID-19 forbearance protection. The warning is specifically for homeowners who are at least two months behind on their federal housing mortgage. The Department of Housing and Urban Development says borrowers must request a pause in payments. And if you're struggling to make that mortgage payment, you're advised to call your servicer immediately. Valley housing experts are encouraging people to take advantage of renter's assistance while it's still available. And although the CDC has extended the eviction moratorium by another month, many Valley residents are still months behind on their rent. Zarema Diaz, who's the director of policy at the Affordable Housing Organization, says the average cost of rent for a two-bed, two-bath is $706 a month. Now, that's according to a study by Come Dream, Come Build. And while it is lower compared to other Texas cities, the average renter here cannot afford it. So for an, an individual to rent that apartment and not spend more than 30% of their income on that housing, they need to earn $14.62 an hour. The median renter in our, in our region currently earns $9.14 an hour. We have a link on our website, valleycentral.com, where you can learn how to get that rental assistance and see if you qualify. It's a place where many people have shared special memories, but now some are calling it an eyesore. The Valley Vista Mall in Harlingen now has several stores for lease. Owner Mike Cohan says revenue has gone down, but the efforts to save it have not. Cohan took over the mall in 2018 and says he's trying to think outside the box to keep it from going under. It's difficult. It's not easy, especially post-COVID, and those retailers suffered a year of absolutely uncertainties to go back to them and try to bring it. I want people to, you know, be patient and believe me, we're doing our utmost to help them all as much as we can. Cohen says he's also on the lookout for potential new talent tenants for them all. Valley Health officials prepare for the Delta strain to make it to the Valley. After the break, we'll tell you how they plan to keep our community safe.